So this video is for uh, experienced professionals who are having some sort of experience in the industry, say five years of experience in some stream, and they want to switch into DevOps and cloud, uh, which is very common. I have seen a lot of people are reaching out uh, with that question. Um, so my suggestion to such uh, people or uh, people who are trying to do this is that it's a great move depending upon, uh, you know, looking at the jobs, the legacy jobs like maybe test automation or a network engineer on a, on a um, data center, those sort of roles. If people add some more value, they learn few technologies and become a DevOps or cloud engineer. They, their career can can be, uh, you know, be longer and also uh, high reward as well uh, associated with such such a move. But at the same time, if you project yourself as a fresher uh, in DevOps and cloud, you are actually going to compete with thousands of other freshers and other uh, such experts who would have just passed out of college or uh, that sort of uh, scenario. So you are competing against them. So you have to project yourself as a senior expert, not in the DevOps and cloud space, but you are bringing some sort of experience. So first thing is to assess about your situation. Assess where you have spent your uh, last five years, four years, whatever experience you bring on the table. What have you done in that so that you can have a better roadmap as to what sort of tools and technologies you should be learning? I'll talk about few such roles will not be all the roles. So just see if um, that sort of um, it's, it's your uh, role fits into that. Then you can comment and mention that. Yes, my role fits there. Um, it's a good advice or bad advice or whatever you feel like. If you are you want to know specific about your role, you can let me know in the comment. I'll try to make another video on that. Let's talk about uh, someone who is um, managing some people. Just doing day to day uh, people management kind of work or a project manager. They can look for a scrum master kind of role. The uh, scrum master of a DevOps team. That is that sort of uh, transition they can they can look at, uh, you know, making their skills available uh, by maybe doing some course on Scrum Master or that sort of thing. That's the low hanging for project management space. Somebody who is a network engineer or CCNA, uh, there is a clear path that, you know, they should look at some sort of automation tools, be it Ansible, Terraform, and build a lot of skills on the cloud side. They don't need to focus a lot of on the application uh, build, package, deploy, uh, the security of the uh, source code of the application. They not, need not focus on that. If they are, they bring five years of uh, network engineer uh, sort of skills, they can look to uh, build more skills in the cloud uh, space, maybe adding a bit of automation to it. If somebody is working as a test automation engineer or uh, testing expert in their last four or five years, then they should look at how DevOps can embrace uh, uh, this, this sort of uh, automation tools and how you can combine your knowledge of uh, building test frameworks that are that are DevOps enabled, how you can embed your test frameworks into a DevSecOps pipeline where you can uh, get the feedback uh, immediately. So it could be building Selenium based frameworks um, and making them containerized so that they are available in your uh, pipelines and you can make use of them. So, so then you are an expert in test automation and you are expert in the integrating those test automation frameworks in the DevOps pipeline. If you are a security expert, uh, you have knowledge of some security incident uh, management products. Uh, why not expand that into uh, uh, full-fledged security products that fit into DevSecOps pipeline. A lot of security products don't fit into uh, DevSecOps pipeline. They are isolated products, so they will monitor your network, uh, monitor uh, some sort of logs uh, in the environment. Those are not very good fit for uh, DevSecOps uh, projects, but um, security products like Sneak, uh, Veracode, Checkmarks, Sysdig, something container security, those sort of products uh, fit into um, the DevSecOps uh, paradigm. So you can, as a security expert, expand that into building more knowledge on those security products. 
objective is basically that you have already spent five, six years in the industry. That shouldn't be uh, wasted. You should learn the right path. So you apply the right knowledge and you you don't compete with a uh, lot of uh, freshers and a lot of juniors that are in the industry. They have their own path. That's their uh, uh, their struggle. They will deal with it. You don't have to be part of uh, that crowd. Basically, just to isolate yourself from the crowd, you need to be slightly proactive, understand what's the right roadmap for your uh, sort of skills and still be relevant in the DevOps and club space. So that is what I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, and and once you do that transition, right? Look, very common advice, the very uh, advice that I'm giving on daily basis, build some uh, medium to complex projects in that space. There is no shortcut. There is no other way to learn DevOps and cloud. You can watch hundreds of videos uh, 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 from your favorite YouTuber or, or any other uh, content creator. But the only way to learn um, this area is to build complex projects, complex projects that are used in the industry where you can have um, uh, a learning as well as you can follow some good practices along with it not just doing for the sake of uh, doing. For example, I have seen a lot of people building an EC2 instance and at max they will install an Nginx container or something user interface on top of it. That's all. But the real meat of any business application or any industry application is the database. They forget about that. They don't integrate their application with a database. I have seen a lot of business applications which run on bad jobs and all. They don't have a user interface, but data database is always going to be there. Whether you mature into AI, ML or any other space, data is always going to be there and data will have to be treated differently from how you treat your presentation layer. So your database will eventually go into secure subnets where you don't have routes available from public subnets uh, directly or from public uh, internet directly. So it has to be treated differently. So if you talk about such uh, scenarios which are beyond hello world, which are beyond very basic uh, sort of uh, scenarios, medium to complex projects is what I call them. Uh, build those kind of projects. And if you are smart, you can justify your previous four or five years of experience as well as add these small projects to your experience through uh, participating in such projects or uh, doing such projects in your free time. And that can be your experience as well. So if you are smart, you can basically add those practice projects as your project experience, but it all depends how you project in your interviews and all. So uh, build such projects. Uh, what I'm doing is I am conducting uh, a sort of two hours webinar on 1st of July. Link is in the description of this video where I will give you some sort of uh, specifications for a project that you should build which will follow some good practices. Uh, eventually you are going to build it. You can present it to us for the uh, community and you can um, we can then put it on YouTube. Other people can learn from it, give their feedback. With that in mind, uh, if you are if you have time, join on um, 1st of July and uh, try to register for that webinar. And uh, let's see um, how this initiative helps you and uh, others. And do talk about your specific roles and we will do another video uh, on, on that role as well. Thank you so much.